Hello and welcome back. Now today, uh, this lesson is just going to consist um, specifically on variables today. So we're going to go a little bit, you already know what a variable is. We've been using variables in every tutorial except the first two, I think. So all we know about variables is that it stores information, and we can store different types of information <clears throat> based on the type of variable. So an int will store integer type variables. Obviously a float and a double will store decimal types. And we also have a boolean, which will store a true or false, and we also know about a character, which will just store one single character. Okay, so if we have an int here, it prints off a, oops, if we have an int here, it'll print off negative 5 to the screen if we decide to print off that, because it prints out the value of the character. Now, uh, let's say we have, now if we try to put in a decimal, if we try to put in a float or a double type into an int, it's like putting a square peg into a round hole. So if we try to do that, the compiler will cut off the corners, which will basically cut off the decimal spot and just make it fit. And we lost some, we lost some data information here, but it'll make it sure it fits. So it, uh, these variables will convert different types here. So if I decided, if, I mean, I, I have a float here. If I try to put in a boolean here, and I put a negative value here, it'll print out a one. Because remember, um, <coughs> if it if the member of the boolean if it's zero, it's going to be considered false. Because that's how it converts. Like it's going to convert an integer to a boolean type. But remember, uh, booleans can only store true or false here. Now, now this right here, it'll just print out one to the screen. It doesn't print out true, but it is. It's going to be stored as true or false. Same thing with false here. Now, if you put, if you tried using characters, you can put a character in for boolean. Let's say we make it t. It'll convert it into either a one or a zero. So the point is here, you can, you can uh, put, you can assign different variable types to a type here. Like we assigned a uh, an int to a, we assigned a double type. We assigned a double to an int, and it converts it to an int. Now, uh, so just be aware that you can do that with almost any type of variable. Let's look at the chair character here. Let's say we make it 66 here. What's going to happen here? <coughs> Prints off a capital B. Okay, well, why would it print off a capital B? Well, if we look at here, just look, we have all these, we got this table here. This is called the ASCII table. It stands for the American Standard Code for <coughs> Information Interchange. So let's say we look at character capital B. If we just look at the decimal here, it says 66. Well, we typed in 66 here and it printed off B. So looking at uh, looking at the 66 here, it prints off B. So just look at the decimal here. Don't look at. Don't worry about the other three columns. Just look at the decimal column, and that's the character that you're going to get. So so there you have it. So let's say we wanted to print off a uh, um. So we want to print off an at to the screen. Like it's the symbol above the number 2 on your keyboard. We can make it say 64. And it prints off that symbol to the screen here. Now let's say uh, we look at this. See this right here? Let's look at these first 0 through 31 here. These are special characters that, aren't on our, that are not on our keyboard here. Now let's look at tab here. Now tab is on our keyboard here, but if we if we typed in tab right here, it'll just tab the the, the blinker over. But it's not really going to be read as a character here. But if we stored this as number 9 here, it's actually going to read this tab character as a character. 
Now when I run this code here, I print it off tab, and look at the blinker now. It's actually tabbed over, and it's over here now. So we got these uh, special characters that aren't on our keyboard here. Now that to go on here, we have an extended table. Now these these are just the decimal types here. Notice that the other three columns aren't there. But we have all these funky characters here. Let's look at this one. Number 204. It's basically a... Uh, looks like a path or a roadway. So let's see what happens when I put 204. And uh, we get that funky symbol here. So we have all kinds of symbols here. We have the we got we got some Greek letters here. We got alpha, beta. I don't know what this one. We got pi. We got the two sigmas. We have a phi. We have a omega. I don't see theta on here. Usually that's a good one to have, but it's not on here. Well, we also have the uh, the approximation. We have the division symbol. I mean, that one's actually on our keyboard, but the point is we have all these symbols here. <coughs> okay. Now, uh, <coughs> we also have the long. Here, let, let's go back to end here. Now, if we print off a negative 5 here, it'll just print off negative 5, but we also have some... Uh, extensions here. So this is not new. We signed it, evaluating it. Let's say we look at an unsigned int. Now an unsigned is an, ex is an extension to the int. It's basically saying it cannot have a sign on it. So it's always going to keep it positive here. So if we try to print off negative 5 here, well, there's going to be something wrong here. Well, look, it prints off this large number to the screen here because unsigned int, it can only store positive values here. So we can print off 7. We just can't have a negative value here. Or Now the bad thing is that the compiler won't crash. The program will still run and you won't even know that something went wrong. Now if we had a signed int here, it's the same thing as just an int here. Right here, it won't crash just because I didn't put a negative number. So I know that's going to be a little confusing here, but signed int is the same thing as int. You can also just use the word signed. It'll be read as int here. Now, do you have to memorize all that? No, because we have a table here that you can use. Let's say we just look at the uh, int here. It's the same thing as signed. We can also just use signed. Now, if we look at uh, if we look at an unsigned int here, we can also just use the keyword unsigned, and it'll automatically know it's an int. Now, we have some variables here that we didn't go over, but don't worry about those. Just look at the ones that you did go over. Let's say we looked at we looked over boolean and character. Well, there's no other names for those. So we also have <coughs> we just have signed unsigned here. But most of the time I'm just going to be using int. It's easier and it makes sense to us. So just be aware that the signed and unsigned here. Well, how many variables can we stole? Let's say we have two billion here. We can print two billion to the screen. Well, how many variables can we print to the screen without it crashing? Let's say we put off another zero here. 20 billion. Well, look, we get this negative number here. Why did they give us a negative number this time? If we look at our table, the int can only store up from negative 2.1 billion to about 2.1 billion here. If we go past this number here, if we go outside these ranges here, uh, strange things start to happen. Like, uh, it'll print off this number to the screen. So there's a way around this. We can also use the keyword long. And it, we will be able to print more. Well, it did the same thing, didn't it? Well, if we look at long here. <coughs> see right here, long. It's also the same thing as long int. Well, look here. It, only, it still prints off the same number. It prints off the same number of decimal spots. So, long didn't do anything here, but if we look at this one here, long, long, that is a variable by itself. And look how many spots it can hold. It can hold a very, very, very large amount of data. So let's make this long, long here. Now I'll be able to print 20 billion to the screen. 
and that's a data type by itself. So if you happen to be using very, very large numbers here, you could use this. But uh, we also have a short here. We can also use short int. But, uh, you know, it does the same thing here. Short, it only stores, uh, it's still an int, it just stores smaller amounts of data here. Now, look at these here. This tells you how many bytes of memory it creates. So, on the RAM, if I made an int on the RAM, it'll create four bytes of memory on the RAM. Now, when my program terminates, when it comes across this return statement, it'll destroy all those variables and you're not wasting any memory on your computer. So, so don't worry about these. I have six gigabytes of RAM, you might have four. But these are nothing here. A gigabyte is a million. No, it's a it's a billion bytes. So do not worry about the the number of bytes it's taking up. So because our programs that we're writing are very small, so just don't worry about the my just bytes. Just all all you need to know for right now is that it is actually putting it's actually um, taking memory on the RAM and. Uh, it's it's using the memory on the RAM at that point, and then it'll be destroyed when you're done. So there's so just know that it's taking up memory. That's all you need to know for right now. When we'll go over this in more detail in a later tutorial when we start covering pointers and references. So that's what we have here. That's that's basically all I wanted to show you about the variables here. And now we'll learn more about variables throughout the other tutorials. So. So I'm not I'm not going to just dedicate another video just to variables here, but uh, we'll we'll learn more about throughout the lessons, one one step like just randomly and throughout videos when they come up. All right, that wraps this up, and hopefully we can <coughs> we'll continue on, and hopefully you're still hanging in there. I know this this is not the most exciting stuff, but uh, we'll get to the fun stuff real soon. I'm working on it. All right, see you in the next tutorial.